Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I'm Lord Ryujin. Thanks for watching today and selecting this video. Now, today's topic is going to be something that I've kind of already discussed a little bit, but I wanted to sort of talk about it again, maybe go into detail a little bit more about it. Today's topic is actually going to be about, um, well, digital games, digital distribution, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've said it before about how I don't really care for it. Um, and one of the reasons why I've said that is because it's not definitive. I mean, if I go out, for an example, uh, right now, and I pick up Assassin's Creed Unity, for an example, and I pick it up and I physically hold it, it's mine forever. It's mine forever, unless I either get rid of it, or scratch it, or, you know, just something happens to the game, so it's not usable anymore. It's pretty much mine forever, as long as it's taken care of. I have NES games behind me that you can't see, but those things still work, like they're brand new, pretty much. Every now and then they do need to be cleaned out, but they pretty much work like they're brand new, and they're over 20 some odd years old. So, I mean... That's just a perfect example. Now, I do understand the desire for digital games. Because it's sort of one of the reasons why I understand why people want to be PC players. It's everything on one machine. But at the same time, I don't exactly trust it. And if I can give you a few examples as to why, maybe you'll understand a little bit more... I will buy digital games. I mean, I have digital games on my Wii U. I have free games that I've owned that I own through uh, PlayStation Plus. Um, I have a few digital titles on my Wii. This, that, and the other. But I like to share a couple of instances where that has backfired on me, and I can sort of move. From one example to another, hopefully I can keep it as coherent as possible. But, digital distribution only works as long as the dis distributor says so. For example, uh, one of the first instances that this happened to me was with the DSi. I had purchased some games like Birds and Beans. Um, I think Photo Dojo was being offered for free, so I downloaded it. Uh, I bought Cave Story, I bought, oh, I can't even remember, I think there was one or two others uh, that, that I'm just having to do, Xscape, that's one, um, anyway, that's not relevant, but the fact was when I got the 3DS, it allowed me to transfer the data over, and I did, but I decided at that time, you know what, I don't want birds and beans right now. I don't want Photo Dojo right now. I'll download them later. That is incorrect. Once you do a system transfer, that's it. So when I went back to my DSi to try to download those games, or when I went into the Nintendo 3DS eShop, thinking, hey, you know, it's got my information, thanks to the Club Nintendo account that I have synced to it, it will allow me to, to download it again. That's not correct. I have to buy it all over again, and I'm not doing that. It's not worth it. So, that's one instance. And the same thing has happened also on the Wii U, because I wanted to just simply have the game saves go over to the Wii U, not the physical games. So now when I go back to my Wii, I can't really access the games that I should have for my WiiWare. That's one of the main problems that I have with it. But that, hopefully, is a problem that will be fixed in the future. That's a problem with Nintendo, more specifically, and how they do uh, their digital rights. But, even so, if you look at something like PlayStation Plus, which I am a member of, and I've stated that before, all those free games that I have are only there until Sony says so. You have to think about that for a minute. Up until the point where Sony decides to say, you know what, PlayStation Plus isn't worth it anymore, we're taking it down. Every single one of those games that I have is now gone. Gone. I physically paid for them, 
Well, technically I did because of PlayStation Plus and giving them money every year. I technically paid for them. And of how few digital games I download through PlayStation Plus, they technically paid for themselves. So they're mine. But not really. They're just rentals. So I'm basically renting these games for 50 bucks a year. And Microsoft is the exact same way. Perfect example is that Ascend, Hand of Call, a game that I really enjoyed, um, and I actually recommended to a few friends of mine. Its servers recently were cut from Xbox Live. Microsoft, I guess, just decided, you know, it's not worth it anymore. We're going to be cutting Xbox Live for 360 in about a year or so. There's, there's no point to having it. And because of that, people who are on Steam, they can still play Ascend Hand of Call because Steam's connected to the PC, and PC is probably going to be infinite when it comes to connecting to the internet. But because Microsoft decided that Ascend wasn't worth the time or the effort anymore, they cut the servers. So now I can't connect to Ascend because it's completely online based. I can't even connect to play the game solo without it connecting to the servers, and there are no servers to connect to. This is one of my main problems and one of my main concerns of digital distribution, and one of the reasons why I still, to this day, if I had a choice, I would prefer the physical version of a game. And it's only because of that, because I cannot fully trust it 100%. Look at my PlayStation 4 that I just got. I downloaded a game called Warframe. And I'm sure that anybody that's played that game knows exactly what I'm talking about. It is also one of those games that connects to a server. Well, for the past couple of days, I haven't been able to connect to a server. There's been nothing to play. I mean, I've, I've had it to where I was in the middle of a mission, and it cut off. No fault of my own. I didn't fail the mission. I was in the middle of a gunfight. Disconnects me. I have to start over again. And then, when I do try to start over again, because I figure, okay, okay, you know, maybe it's something weather related or, or whatever. I try to start over again. Can't connect. So you can't play. Sorry. Okay. So basically, these games are on a until-we-say-so basis, which I do not like. I want to be able to pick up a physical copy of the game, like I did of No More Heroes, like I did of a lot of games that came out for the Wii, and just pop it into my system and play it. That's all that I want. I don't want to... It's one of the reasons also why I think I avoided PC gaming, is because I do not want to sit there and spend hours trying to optimize this silly thing to make it look and run the best that it possibly can. I want to just be able to just pop the thing, I want to be able to just pop the game into the system, go through whatever brief update it might need, and play. That's it. That's all that I ask of my games. I don't need this big complicated thing of, oh, maybe if I run it in higher settings, it will run. I, I don't care. I just want to pop it in and play it. I want to be able to enjoy the game. And I worry that when it comes to digital games, that we're not going to be able to fully enjoy them. Because it's only a matter of time until the servers are cut. I've already given the example of Ascend. But then you also have to think of how I might get into Halo. For the longest time I had a chip on my shoulder when it came to first person shooter games. And that chip has recently sort of vanished. Chipped away, if you will. And so, I've been giving first-person shooters a little bit more of an opportunity than what I did in the past. And if I decide to go into Halo, get into it, try the first one, and I love it. So now I want to go through and I want to play all of them. By the time I get to Halo 4, Xbox Live will be gone on the 360. So... Yeah. And it makes more sense that they would do that now that the Master Chief Collection has come out and they have all four of those games on one disc. Which I'm not going to be getting really. I don't really like the idea of achievements too much anymore. Which is another reason why in other videos I've suggested that they should make those optional. Make If we want them, 
Now let's pay $2 extra for them. Because for certain games, yeah, I want to have achievements. Certain games, I really want to see, look, I really like this game. I want to be able to do extra in it. I want to see what options I have for achievements. And then there's other games like Fruit Ninja that when I picked it up for Connect, I wanted to just play it. I didn't want to worry about stupid achievements. So now I pretty much just ignore achievements. It's frivolous anyway. Unless it's a game that I really like and then I'll try to 100% it. But that's just an example of what I'm talking about. Is what if you're somebody like me that just now is getting into the Lost Planet series because you didn't know about it until the third game was announced at E3. You're sitting there looking at a trailer for Lost Planet 3. Man, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go check that out. And you find a copy of Lost Planet for five bucks. So you pick it up and you like it. But those servers are gone. So all those online moments that you could have had, they're gone. And any chance of playing with your friends online, that's gone too. Oh well. It seems like it sort of ruins the experience a little bit for me when stuff like that happens. And so I don't think that I can fully trust digital games completely because of that. Because while I do have physical games on my Wii U, I bought them. And they will be on my hard drive forever. But if by chance some freak accident happens and my hard drive wipes itself clean. And for whatever reason, Nintendo Club Nintendo is gone. I don't have any proof that I bought those games. I can't download them again because there's no more Nintendo servers. Sounds like you're out of luck. But even if I decided to one day go back to Mario Kart 8, 20 some odd years from now with this, by the way, I could pop in the disc into my Wii U, start it up, and play it. Because it's physically there. Not in some imaginary cloud that may or may not exist in the next decade. And that is my problem with digital. Until we're at a point to where I feel more comfortable with it. I probably won't be investing in digital. I don't care for your PlayStation Now service. I don't care for your EA Access or whatever it is. That I don't care for any of that. I want to physically own the games because until we get to a point where this is a proven thing, like online, I'm okay with getting online now. Because it's been proven. When it was first introduced during the Dreamcast and the GameCube and the Xbox era, I avoided it. Because there was no guarantee that it was going to pick up. And honestly, a lot of it was kind of sloppy back then. I mean, I remember trying to deal with PSO online. You had to have a dial-up service, and it was just a pain in the butt. It was worth getting online. It was kind of neat. But look at where it is now. It's gone. You can't even play Fantasy Star Online on the original Xbox because you need an Xbox Live account that's still attached to the system but you can't connect to the servers so what difference does that make? And that's a good example at least one that I can think of as to why I just I'm not okay with digital distribution yet but that's just my two cents I hope that a lot of that made sense. Um, if not, put it down in the comments so if I can clarify a little bit more for you. Or just share your thoughts on, on the matter. What do you think about digital distribution? Do you think it needs to still advance a little bit more before it can fully be there? Do you think it will never come? Or do you think that that's the inevitable future? And as always, guys, thanks for watching my video, especially if you've watched me this far. I appreciate all the support that I can get. Um, and leave your comments below. I'd like to know what you guys think about this. Let's have a healthy conversation. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a good one, and I'll see you next time.